Hey, everyone. Uh, we just want to make a quick disclaimer here. We're going to talk about different bands on our show. We're not interested in really hashing out whether they're punk, emo, pop punk, post-industrial bluegrass. We don't claim to be the authority on anything that we talk about. We just want to talk about the memories we had with the music we grew up with. We respect everyone's right to like what they like, and we know that every band is somebody's favorite band. That being said, we want you to approach each episode with an open mind. We're here to take a look back at the music we grew up with. Although we've grown old, we don't have to grow up. Welcome to the Pod Punk Show. Hello and welcome to the Pod Punk Show. My name is Aaron Haig. And I'm John Bryan. Uh, how you doing, Johnny? I'm not bad. How are you, Aaron? Good. I, I, I like to point out that like uh, I asked you a couple episodes ago if I could call you Johnny and you said no. And then yeah. every time I do it, you, you never say anything. Because I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just don't like, um, uh, I don't like it. But I also know, like, the more I go against it, the more it's going to happen. That is true. It is less fun that I'm um, like, you don't care. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's fine. Even like my, my friends in Florida do it as well. So we're all good. So did you see they, they updated Pokemon Go? No. Yeah, no, they updated Pokemon Go. You don't play that anymore, do you? No, Pokemon Go sucks, dude. Right? Didn't it, like, fall off the map pretty quick? Well, to me, there's no depth to the game. Like, you there, you can catch everything. Yeah. But then, like, there's no battling. There's no trading. Yeah. The okay. gyms suck. My problem with Pokemon Go, though, as a whole thing, is for the longest time, um, and you can go on Google and look this up, Nintendo was saying, like, they're going to start releasing games on Apple. Right. And everyone's like, oh, shit, like, what are they going to put out? And they're like, the first game we put out is going to be a game that's going to really take health and put it like upside down and get people to go out there and really be active and healthy. Like Game Freak and Nintendo has been trying to get us to fucking like be social and go outside yeah. from the beginning. From the beginning. <laughs> and so like everyone's like they kept saying they were going to put a game like that and then they put out Pokemon Go. But like the joke is, is that is the game. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's literally what it was. Like they just were doing that spin so they, people didn't realize they were putting out a Pokemon game. But that's really their only like goal. To me there's just Pokemon Go like it just it doesn't feel like it's great for like most of the people I know who really love Pokemon Go are not people who really love like red and blue or yeah. uh, black and white. They didn't play like the handhelds as much. Yeah, the handhelds are so good, dude. Right. So like to me, I'm like, this just doesn't feel like a Pokemon game. Yeah. Like this feels like you sold the rights to Pokemon to another company. Yeah, no, exactly. Because it's not made by Game Freak. It's made by. Well, uh, there was another game that they just know, ripped, they just used the actual stats from Ingress. Yeah, Ingress. Like literally, is, like Pokemon you couldn't make that game without them though, because they already had all this location. That's, what I was gonna say, like, that's all they did is they just changed the whatever the where in Ingress. They changed that to like a pokey stop. Like right. that's all they did. They didn't do anything else to it. And then the other thing was they made it really hard to where if you're driving around, you can't catch Pokemon anymore. Right. Which thank fucking God. But also at the same time, I, yeah. I used to take the buses instead of the subway well, you just have to play to. Pokemon Go. Yeah, and like not only that, like <laughs> if you don't live in New York City, how, what else are you doing? Like you live in Florida, what you like you're gonna go outside and you're gonna walk around the woods? Yeah. Like, you can't do that. You would get killed by like a snake or a bear or an alligator. Like up here it's so different. Like even that, like when I would show like my brother in law like Pokemon Go, yeah. I would take like a screenshot of like the heights. <laughs> and every 400 feet there's like a new like pickup point he would show me the same screenshot of him and pop coast he would need to be on a bike going like 13 miles per hour to hit like five in an hour no 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 i when it first came out i was back in iowa like yeah. the week because i didn't even know it was a thing that was going to happen it just came out all of a sudden i was back in iowa right and there was like nothing around there's no stops i get back here and i go to because like the biggest hot spot like one of the biggest hot spots in the world is um the corner of central park yeah. What is it, like Grand Army Plaza? Yeah. There's like four Pokestops well, no, that Grand that Army Plaza is Brooklyn, but uh, you're talking about uh, Columbus Circle. No, 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 the other corner. The one by the Apples Road, that's the Okay, hot that's spot. Fifth Avenue. Yeah, okay, cool. But there's like a plaza there that's like something Army something. Yeah, maybe it's... I know what you're talking about. There's the one with like an Army yeah. station, but Grand Army, I think, is the one in Brooklyn Prospect Park. Probably. Who knows? I have no idea what I'm talking about either. Like, we, you, we both do that. I know. But no, I, like I went there, yeah. and like uh, as soon as I got back, and I sent a picture to my uh, my sister and her boyfriend Dalton, and uh, like and like they like it blew their mind, like That's how crazy. many? Because also just on the screen, there's like thirty Pokemon, because there's so many people with lures right. and like everything going. Yeah, everybody's building off of it. I just want to welcome our audience into the uh, Pokey Punk Show. This is the Pokey Punk <laughs> Show. We just like to talk about shit. We just happen to like music a lot too. We actually don't talk about music in person anymore to save it for the show. Otherwise, yeah. we talk about everything. But let's, uh, I don't know. I could keep talking about Pokemon, but I almost feel like this is enough of a test that if they got this far, we should actually tell them if they didn't read the title, what band we're talking about. Oh, yeah. What band are we talking about? We're talking about Charizard, right? Uh, yeah, we're talking about Charizard and the, ma and the, magnific <laughs> I can't, the Magnificent Magic Carp 7. <laughs> yeah, the Magnificent Magic Carp 7. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, All you doing, boys out there. Yeah. So uh, this week, if you haven't guessed already by what we've been talking about, it's clearly <laughs> Billy Talent. Billy 
Canadian talent, the Canadian superstars. Let's start off with just some history and some facts about them. So, uh, what year did they start? 1993? Yeah, they're like from way, way back then. 1993. That's forever ago, man. Well, they're all like, because I was watching, I was to pre- uh, pre- prep for this, I was watching like a bunch of interviews and stuff, and uh, like they're all in like their early 40s now. Yeah, they're like 41 each. I yeah, think, right? they still look young because they're Canadian. I feel Canadian is, everything's a little different up there. A little bit different. No, uh, Canada to me is just a country that took all the good ideas America's had and yeah. then just actually did them. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. <laughs> they follow through. Like, <laughs> that's healthcare. <laughs> Uh, like, there's just as many guns per capita, but they don't use them. Instead of writing the self-help books, they read them and actually put them to use. <laughs> That's the only difference. I also, I love hockey. Like, I honestly, I would, like, I'm also, I sweat all the time. I should just move to Canada. Oh, I know, right? Do they have a summer? Because, like, I, I think I might I do, but I think like it feels Canada like too. fall. Like, what are, the, what are some of the bigger cities up there? There's Montreal. Toronto. Toronto's, Toronto's almost the size of New York. Yeah, like, we could, we could do this. You want to move the show, like, to Canada? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm down. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm totally in. Like work, what is it? Work uh, smarter, not harder. Right. Move like, to Canada. That should be their that should be their state motto. Like country motto is like work smarter, not harder. Oh, Canada. totally. Do you think? What do you think the uh, the uh, like like uh, this is also such a cocky American thing? Like it's right? so hard to become an American. It's so hard. Like do you, like, but we just assume like, well, obviously they're gonna let me move anywhere else. They they obviously want an American they to would, join them. They would be so happy to have me, my uneducated <laughs> ass with no degree. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> with strong opinions and I, like. I, yeah. I'm best known for yelling at like people on the sidewalk. Yeah, entitled. Like, what what else do you want? I'm like my sodium <laughs> is through the roof. Yeah, I'm perfect for you guys. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a winner joining the team. Yeah, I'll, but the only thing is they don't want people to tell them how the healthcare really works up there. That's the big thing. Yeah. Wait, you guys don't charge people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, so they start in 1993. Yeah. Um, and their original name was Pez. Pez with two Z's. ZZ. Yeah. Pez. Is that the same? Is the Pez dispenser only one Z? I have no idea, to be honest with you. I would assume it's one, is what I would think. I think so. We have literally seven items on this table right now that have internet. Yeah, but no. Like, our, <laughs> our brain. That's all we need. I, if, if our brain could connect to the internet, it would be a different story. So Absolutely. they were known as Pez from 1993 to, like... Uh, 98, 99? Yeah, 98, 99 is kind of when they went through. <clears throat> and so I thought, okay, they got to a certain point, and then the Pez Candy Company came right. up to them and was like, hey, guys, you <laughs> no longer can use that name. Like, we're going to have to change it up. There's a copyright infringement, please. Right. Not the case at all. So it turns out it was just an American band named Pez. Right, that that, that, had, that held the international copyright. Yeah, so, like, my next question is, why didn't they add 182 to them? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Pez 182 and you're done. <laughs> it's right there in the pop punk handbook. It's right there. That's how you do it. <laughs> ne- and then next thing you get naked and you have a multi platinum album. Did like, I ever tell you my new band is called Green Day 182? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's how you do it. So <laughs> we just solved it for you guys. You guys really don't have to listen anymore. If you want to do a yeah. band and you want to figure out how to do it, name yourself whatever you want to name yourself. Wait till you get the phone call. You have to change the name, add 182, and it's over. Everything else does for itself. Am I correct? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Kick your drummer out, get a new drummer, and you're done. Call well, that's, day. that's almost every band I've ever been in. Yeah. You always fire your first drummer. Right, which is, that's the other thing with this band that's kind of interesting is they're going to stick it out and they're going to have all these members go all, the entire time. Yeah. So Canadian. What are they going on? They're going on like 25 years or something Yeah, now? they're getting up there, like 22, 23 years in. And they're all the same all four the members. All the exact same four and members. And they met in high school. Yeah, and so what you're dealing with here, what do we have? We have a vocalist that does not play. Yep, we have, we have Ben. Uh, I, I actually... Spent like an hour today trying to figure out how to say his last name. Dude, you do it. I, I was going to say Ben S. So uh, a, Ben Kowalowicz. And that's not even, the S isn't even right. So like, no, it shows no. how much I put that's it. That's the drummer's it. last name. <laughs> yeah, with an S, so. So, uh, ben Kowalowicz. Yeah, that's a Canadian. Or it's Kowal- no, no, it's, it's Polish. No, I was making a joke. <sighs> <laughs> Whoa, canned laughter. Bring it on. <laughs> So they but have yeah, a. We're gonna go with Kowalovich. Uh, okay. Ben, if you're listening, I I truly spent like 20 minutes trying to find an interview of him on YouTube saying his own name. Did you find it? No, because they they always interview like introduce him as Ben from Billy Town. You know what you should have did. You should have put it in as Siri and asked her to say your name. Siri would have told. I did, but I don't trust Siri. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Siri's supposed to know. Then they have who? They have Ian. Ian Desa, the guitar player. Yep. A fucking. We're gonna talk about him a lot. He is a god of a guitar player. He is very good. Then we have, what, Jonathan as the bassist? Yeah, John Gallant. Yep. And then we have, what, Aaron? Yep. Aaron Solo, uh, Solo Wonyuk. Yeah, that's another fun. That's, that's a Nyuk. That's a, that's a Canadian last name, right? I think do, so. Do, does Canada have last names that are Canadian? No, they're like America. They're from everywhere. Like, unless we're talking literally like Inuits or Eskimos. 
like the only the they're only they're all like French or and like Polish. anybody in Canada is listening to us like and I, I love you guys but the only way I really know Canada is from South Park like the square heads and, you know, <laughs> and the, the, the <laughs> everything's uh, square and like that's yeah that's it that's sad all, all you know is Ike and Ike and that's <laughs> it <laughs> so hey buddy <laughs> hey buddy don't call me buddy guy <laughs> I'm not your guy friend <laughs> don't call me friend chief. Oh, my wife hates that voice because oh, I, I I use that voice whenever she asks me to do something I don't want to do. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, come on, guy. So they, they're pretty simple. They they stuck it with four of them, and with that guitarist, they don't need a second guitarist. No. By the way, I've never seen anything like that. The, like the life. amount of fullness he can play with. I, I I it's actually he reminds me of. I'm gonna go on a little thing here. Yeah. What he reminds me of is uh he reminds me of John Bonham, the uh, drummer from Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Because if you've ever watched, you should actually look it up. There's a video of someone playing a perfect cover of a of a Good Times, Bad Times by Led Zeppelin. Right. And they have a cam just on his foot. And he's doing what... Because John Bonham, he figured out how to do triplets in like real time with just one pedal. Wow. And because he heard it from an old jazz drummer who didn't... He didn't know you could have two bass drums. Yes. So he figured out how to do this thing that's inhuman because he assumed someone had already done it. Right, of course. And that's what Ian DeSalle reminds me of. Like, he's like, okay, there's, I'm only going to play guitar. Right. But I want this to sound full as if we had two guitars. It's so he insane. just figured out a way to make it sound I that way. I don't know how he does it. Like, uh, uh, all the videos I've watched of them actually playing live, I've, like, stopped. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I like, is there a backing track that they're doing? Is there a guitarist right. off on the side that's going on? You're, like, I've looking never, for wires and mirrors? I've never seen a guitarist that is that tight and also that, like, full. At the exact same time, it's no, absolutely insane. It's 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 fucking bonkers. Also, like I, I want to give Ian DeSai as much credit as I can, but I also I don't want to take too much away from their bass player. No, the too. bass player is awesome. He's he's just as on the, he's the equivalent on the bass side of it's right. absolutely insane. Well, it, again, it reminds me of Led Zeppelin because yeah. uh, John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. Oh, yeah, no one gives him any credit because he's playing next to one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Yeah, it's but tough. he's playing just as fast and just as just difficult. As good. And he's also like what I I noticed too is he's not using a pick. Obviously, he's going with his fingers. Yeah, but he's, he's hitting he's, those. Strings the same way a piano string gets hit by like a key on the mm -hmm. piano. I've never seen the punch like that before. It's absolutely incredible. It has the incredible. punch, and it's also it's consistent. Yeah, no, it's really, really, and really good. And he can play just as fast. Yeah, I was absolutely it, like in, even the singer though too. Like they're they're all almost like savant level at their actual instrument when they're playing. Oh, absolutely. I was really impressed by that. And like this is a band too. When it comes to Billy Talent, I was never a fan. I had my own, which we'll get into. I've had my own like predispositions yeah, yeah. with them and all that. Let's, let's knock out our notes on Pez real quick. Okay, cool. Um, so Pez, they self-released an album that they paid for. Yeah, they had to put it all together. They did that like in Watoosh. Watoosh. They were like basically the indie level size of the like Canadian. I don't think I've heard. Yeah. I mean, basically, this is how I took it, okay? And I know nothing. This, okay. It seems to me is like this is a band that was all musically gifted. They put together like a band in high school for a talent show. And they kind of just were doing it on the side and they were living normal lives. Yeah. So they had jobs or they were going to school, but the band was not the priority. Ian DeSaw has an, a degree in animation. Yeah, exactly. He's also, he's a, like, I've seen some of his animations. Yeah, like he's, his, he's a little too a, good at everything that Ian DeSaw Yeah, it's almost guy. the thing of like, come on, dude, just yeah. give me something you're bad at. Yeah, like he also does like open heart surgery, but like <laughs> he stopped doing that. On the weekends. Yeah, yeah, on the weekends. But yeah, basically, so I took from them is that this is a band of guys that are like really good friends. They all were going to school together. They're all creative. They're kind of doing it on the side. It's almost like they they stayed like local high school band level well after high school. Like it wasn't really yeah. like a forefront for them. I'm sure they were getting like respect and seen. They put out EPs mm -hmm. and all that. But yeah, and then it just seems like they finally got to a point. And they're like, hey guys, we've been doing this for like seven years. Like we might as well put out an album now. We all have jobs. We've been saving it up. We've had like pretty strict lives. We have savings accounts. Let's just fund our album. Basically, is what I saw from it. Oh, totally. And uh, uh, so they changed their name to Billy Talent. Yeah, they, they had to. And that's after they put out their first album. But the other thing, too, when they changed their name to Billy Talent, they did like a hard reset. No, they totally changed their sound. They yeah. totally, like, they kind of, like, they took a step back. And I'm like, okay, let's not look at this as a uh, distraction or as a issue. Let's look at this right. as an opportunity. And when they changed their name to Billy Talent, and this yeah. is a note you wrote down, yeah. and I never thought about, but, like, uh, I, re I read online a lot of places, uh, a lot of people don't know. No one in the band is named Billy Talent. Well, that was my predisposition. Like, I, I thought that somebody was. Like, that's how I took it. Like, that leads me to, like, another point. When it comes to bands and names, like, how important is the name? Like, is that something that you weigh into an actual band? Does it actually give you, like, a look at, like... 
Well, it's a thing of it matters more if you've never heard the band than yeah. after you've heard them. Okay. It, it's that thing of it's it's the it's the logo outside the store than what's in the store because once right. you're inside, you're already inside. Of course, it's the cover to the book, basically. Exactly. So like it matters a lot, okay. but it it isn't. I don't think it's the thing. Like it's it's a modifier. It's like a plus three or minus three. It's right. not like a uh, a live or die. Okay. I mean, like I'm a little bit more harsh. I think when it comes to bands in general, when it comes to this band, and obviously too, like unless like. You're because they're not really big, big in the States. They had a little bit of a push with like the first Billy Town album came out. There's a couple singles that made airplay. It, the, the name I hate. I absolutely hate their name. It's, really? prob- it's probably between that and we're going to get into the guitarist like look, his like physical look. Okay. Like between those two, it just made it to a point where like I could never actually come around and get So it, your, is, your preconception of them led you to never like uh, really listen like with open ears. Yeah, absolutely not. And it's it's a shame, but like it's just like whatever it is. And it's just like something with the Billy talent, like whenever it's a name, you know what I mean? but like it sounds like a fake name right like to me like i just see like a kid that should be like delivering like newspapers or something like i have no idea what it is but there's something about that name that i just can't yeah i hate it absolutely hate it and not only that they like they went above and beyond with it all their albums billy talent (laughs) one billy talent two which again billy talent three that though that is another nod to zeppelin zeppelin's first albums are zeppelin one two three and four oh is it really yeah okay billy talent's first three are then they started naming them that's cool i like when a band decides that they're led zeppelin too and just (laughs) but honestly they're the only band that i'm like that's fair yeah no i mean they're (laughs) absolutely is but Uh, billy talent's a band that i think i like about them they have their own youtube channel and there's a lot of content they're like putting up new content on their youtube channel Yeah, they like they do a lot of like, especially whenever they're in their studio, they put up a lot of videos and like uh, fan questions and they're very interactive. But I was watching, there's also this uh, YouTube series called Bus Invaders, mm-hmm. which I don't know the company, but it's a YouTube channel and they go like to Warp Tour and they just like interview a band on their bus oh, and like awesome. have them give them a tour. That's a really good idea. Um, So I saw theirs and I've seen a couple of these. Their bus is so clean. I believe it because like they're like, that's what I was saying though. Like they're, <laughs> they're not the normal transgression of a band. No, they're super polite Canadian. You boys. know what it is? It's like, um like most bands to me are like, it's a couple and they accidentally have a kid and they're like, okay, well I guess we got to like <laughs> make this work now these guys are like they went to college they got their degrees they built up their savings right. they dated around they came back they said you know what you kind of were the best for me like you want to <laughs> basically have a kid with me you're my best friend and i think i could fall in love with you like that's how it, it seems to me basically so um so and also let's, let's uh sticking on the the canadian bent they're also they're very successful internationally they're not yeah. they're actually like they like their first album they had some tracks that got on like the top 40 modern rock in the u.s yeah yeah they had a little bit of play here but they like they're huge they're, they're one of the biggest bands of all time in Canada. That's incredible. Um, they're really huge in Germany, the UK, Australia. Yeah. It's incredible. It but really they've is. never chased you. Uh, like they've never chased trying to be huge in the United States at the expense of the rest of the world, which most bands do. Most bands like they just try to make it here. Um, and I kind of respect that too, because like, right. they, they, like they're they still they tour the U.S. They still sell out shows and stuff. Right. But they they've never like tried to like be three days grace. They've never tried to be. Oh, okay. So you're saying like yeah. instead of giving extra attention to the U.S., they kind of spread their way right. out. And that, you know, I mean, that that is a really unique way of, I guess, the approaches to U.S. marketing. And also, too, like, you're forgetting, like, at this time, there's, like, a Canadian invasion. So, like, you have Avril Lavigne, you have Sum 41, you have Simple yep. Plan, you have Bare Naked Ladies. Like, you, you're now crossing different genres. Three Days of Grace. Music, three Days Grace. Nickelback. Uh, oh, God. Nickelback. Like, uh, Jesus. So, you, you have, <laughs> like, that alone. You mean that, the Canadian Beatles? That almost ruined <laughs> music, like, Canadian imports forever. Like, we actually, uh, there was a point, I think, we were going to close off the circuit so it'll stop allowing bands. We were going to close the border? Yeah, that was it. We're like about we were, to build a northern wall? We were done. Yeah, that was <laughs> like, do you guys do not ever do that to us again. But like basically, it's an interesting strategy though. Like they, they saw that and they were yeah. like, they were just like, I think the emo market, pop punk, pop, punk rock market's so oversaturated to begin with. Just from a business aspect is how I'm looking at it. Right. So decided to go global instead of actual, you know. I also, I, I think their sound too doesn't play as well on, like you can't hear them on like Kiss FM in the United States. Well, no, like that was like a note that I had was like, it's like, eating mcdonald's in another country it's a big mac but it's like it's familiar but it's somehow it tastes different mm, you know what okay. i mean like that's like kind of like how i looked at their music yeah it's like it's familiar they're doing everything that i know but for whatever reason it just doesn't it's not like you know the comfortable flavors that i'm used to basically is like what i'm trying to say with that so let's talk a little bit about how they go from being kind of a just a local band to being a signed touring yeah. first album coming out band so uh we're gonna break this into two parts because uh the story i heard that a big part of it led up to it is i, I actually saw an interview with uh cool uh, ben talking about this. So there's this huge festival that takes place in Toronto that's kind of like South by, but much smaller, of course. Okay, cool. So they get a call and they go, hey, Buster Rhymes dropped out of this festival. Do you want to play? 
<laughs> that's awesome. Totally. Oh my God, that's fucking awesome. So basically what you're saying is there's a festival going on. They're not really in the festival or they are in it, but because a big act dropped out, they got moved up to a better position. They weren't in it at all until Buster Rhymes dropped out. Oh, wow. And so they were taken in as consideration, like last minute, we need yeah. to put somebody into it. That's awesome. You, you see that, kids? It just always, always be around. Yeah, be around and be like willing to play. On what is like it? 90% of, of it is just showing up? Yep. Yeah, that's exactly it. So Buster Rhymes didn't show up and so Billy Talent got their break. And like, this is like super late in their career. Like we're talking like we're almost 10 years in and like this is now and this is starting to happen here, right? We're six or seven. So like 93 to like 99, 2000. Yeah. So like we're in like 2000, 2001. Is that the era that we're in right now? Yeah. That's incredible. Tell the story or kind of lay out the facts of like how they went from being unsigned to signed. Yeah. So basically they, they changed their name from Pez because the American Pez gave them trouble, not the candy company. Okay? <laughs> I still, John. Uh, it's so dumb. <laughs> we, we took a small break earlier and John read me the like the, uh, the actual document. <laughs> They got yeah. sent of uh, the American Pez to the Canadian Pez yeah. to the rights that they've held internationally since yeah. 19. And it's such a dumb sounding it's thing so of like dumb because like Pez as a name is like eh, it's, it's it's kind of whatever. Like yeah. it, so- it sounds like your first band's name. Yeah, it's like it's like you don't stick with that though. Like at some point you have to change it. You know what but I mean? But it's also this legalese of like oh actually sir uh, we go by Pez. Yeah, we are the real Pez, sir. We have that documentation to prove it. 1989. Oh my God, it's so bad. So they change their name from Pez and then they decide like, listen guys, we're going to regroup. We're changing our sound. We're going to go more aggressive. It's going to be a little bit more punk rocky. Okay. Yeah. And I guess before that they were a little skyy. They had a couple of other influences going on. They were, I also feel like they were writing a little bit of like that kind of new metal feel too. So they've now changed their name to Billy Talent and they're talking to an A&R that's from their town. Right. And they're like, will you come out and see us? And she's like, Pez, I've seen you guys. I know what you're all about. And they're like, we're not Pez anymore. You're now Billy Talent. <laughs> and she goes, what? And they go, we are now Billy Talent. And then John, she goes, John, when he's doing this, is like holding his finger up like, now you listen here, yeah. miss. Yeah, you listen here, miss. You're talking to Billy Talent, not You're Pez. talking to Billy Talent. This isn't Pez. So they decide to tell her that they changed her name to Billy Talent. She says, well, I'm intrigued. <laughs> so that night, she went out and she viewed what she thought was Pez. It turned out it was Billy Talent. And she said, you know what? I didn't like Pez. I still don't like Pez. Pez is shitty. I don't like that type of candy. This Billy Talent, though, I'm going to tell my boss about them. Next thing you know, <laughs> Billy Talent has a record deal. With uh, Atlantic and Warther, uh, Warner Brothers. Yeah, not a small record deal. No. No. This is like um, the Wrigley of candy they, they, they got signed with. It would be like if Pez walked in and Wrigley was like, we need this type of candy. Let's I just want to analyze your brain for a second. Yeah. You go for like, okay, I'm going to go like the big leagues of candy. Yeah. You don't go Hershey. You don't I couldn't go Mars it. Company. I was, I was, too, I was too much pressure. I should have planned it out. I'm riffing. You didn't even go Nabisco. Yeah, no. You, I don't know. You go I, Wrigley. That's all I knew. I knew Wrigley gum. It's okay. Field. I that's just wanted it. to bust your balls on yeah, that a little. It's awesome. But yeah, that, that's the story of how like they got like their first deal and leads into their first album that we're going to talk about. Yeah. So let's go into a break here. Okay, cool. And then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the album we're going to focus on today is Billy Talent One or just yeah. self-titled Billy Talent or Billy Talent I. Depends on how you, how you are. Capital I. Yeah, if you don't understand Roman numerals. Yeah, yeah, so it's whatever you need to do. So let's go into the break. I want to play a little bit of Lion and Sinker. Okay, cool. Which is a great song. So we're going to play some of that and we'll be right back. And then I'm going to go gel my hair straight up. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, it would help us out a lot if you could rate, review, and subscribe in iTunes or however else you get your podcasting fix. Or better yet, just tell somebody you know via word of mouth. It goes a lot farther than you think. Hey everybody, if you want to get in contact with us here at the show, you can find us on Twitter at PodPunkShow. Our email address is PodPunkShow at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. Back to the show. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with us. So we're, we're doing Billy Talent this episode, and we're going to kind of dive into their original first Billy Talent CD is basically what we're their focusing on. Their debut, Billy Talent 1. Yeah. Exactly. So I just wanted to kind of go over that a little bit quick. Um, it's technically their second album that they came out with, correct? As a band, but they first as Billy Talent. Right. And then I would also argue that this is the first actual like major production where they actually have outsized money, outside input, and then also a producer that's overseeing and really... Right. They're going to come out with this. It's called Billy Talent 1. Okay? Yeah, I actually think of 
time it was just Billy Talent. But like, okay, exactly. It's so that thing of like uh, retrospectively. Retrospectively, like they went. Since back they in. went two and three after, they call this one. Okay, that makes perfect sense there. So this album comes out in two thousand and three. Okay, mm-hmm. and they don't put out another album till two thousand six. So they have a good three year period in between the two albums. And just really quick to touch on that. So their albums go two thousand three, two thousand six, yep. two thousand nine, two thousand twelve, yep. and then everything's uh, very tidy. Twenty sixteen has a delay, but we'll talk about why there's a little delay there. But yeah, okay. every, they have a really good cycle of yeah album uh well it three comes years of touring next album it comes back to my thing where they didn't accidentally have the kid everything's been planned out right so they're they're very mature and responsible they have so, a 401k exactly <laughs> exactly so we have uh, the producer on this is gavin golden brown so he's gonna basically he's known for a lot of canadian bands uh can you name like it's the thing of like i only know him in relation to billy talent from reading up on them i exactly. don't know what else he's good for he he Touched on Bare Naked Ladies, but he wasn't like the producer that broke them. He actually recently did Bare Naked Ladies. Okay. But he was also, he broke um, Three Days Grace. Which so, is huge. That's like, huge. Uh, yeah. Which is, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, I feel our audience is a lot of people who like have a passing knowledge of pop punk and yeah. some people who only know like punk and emo. Right, exactly. Uh, I assume everyone knows who Three Days Grace is. Well, I mean, like, just treat it like they don't. Because, I mean, that's Okay. That's so Three Days Grace it. is a, they're like a modern rock, they're like a rock rock band. Yes. Uh, Bronx just dropped his toy. It's all good. He's. <laughs> I, I, I can't not acknowledge him he's so cute yeah so three days race they're a modern rock band they're uh kind of just right down the middle rock they're very like they have that like you know 2000s 20 teens like sound of like rock like you would hear them on your modern rock station like, okay in cool. Iowa growing up mine was rock 108 out of waterloo so they're coming in on the, like the radio rock yeah exactly like the like the modern rock 100 right. like and they so dominate this producer he broke billy talent and he also broke them so he was kind of like at that time in 2003 he's like moving on like all cylinders right he's and i just want to throw this in quick here because Please. i don't know we're not going to bring up three days grace again uh what's really interesting about billy talent too is their rehearsal space i saw i don't know if it's still there but they practiced there for years uh-huh. there's this huge like warehouse in toronto uh-huh. where each like huge like garage room is a different band and like they practice in the same building as like three days grace or, like, oh, wow. on fire is it called the factory because like that's where they recorded uh in, no i think they actually go to a studio but like their yeah. recording space like they like they share with a bunch of other bands that's really cool yeah i i I, bet, I wonder if something like that exists in new york it might but i mean again canada is just a lot better at putting the, like, yeah. ideas together like getting and along fooling through <laughs> yeah it's really weird so uh, the album came out it went three times platinum in Canada and uh, right so and what's the difference between a platinum record in Canada and then the platinum record in the United States I think it's is it like half as much or is it like a tenth as much yeah it's definitely like ratioed off I think what it's a million for a platinum in the US yeah, and so, I think it's five hundred thousand in Canada. No, I think it might be a hundred thousand in Canada. It's a hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's like really, really cut off. So, but that makes sense though, because like the the population of Canada as a whole is right. so much smaller than the U.S. because it's so cold, it's mountainous, and it's really spread yeah, out. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. So they they have to kind of make up for that. So that was like the main difference there. So their album goes it goes three times platinum there, so that's three hundred thousand copies. Yeah. Okay, and then also they went gold in Germany. So they're, they're internationally they're they're doing pretty good. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and then also there's a a 10 year anniversary re-release of this album as well yeah that's awesome it came out in 2013 so 10 years and it has after it's released. a bunch of demos acoustic versions live versions yeah so that's that's pretty awesome so they basically made like a double cd out of it yeah and, and like 10 years is like respectable like that's when you kind of want to go and take a look back at your first yeah, album yeah no absolutely it's right in that time zone too we want to be in it's like 2002 to 2012 but so. let's go back to like 2003 or the two th- early 2000s when when and how did you find out billy talent was a thing that existed what was your first feelings like how uh, did it okay. hit you my, my first billy talent memory as well yeah yeah like I, I mean I, I don't really know like I, I they were there and I knew them like there's memories of them you like you know that's a thing in yeah the yeah and like so like when I was actually listening to their music this time around and just full disclosure I am not like a Billy Talent fan I didn't listen to them back in the day like I basically was hearing everything for the first time like this past couple weeks okay okay but I all I remembered was the guitarist and he has a very unique like haircut okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, has the, he has that like really tall yeah it's like there's actually a great YouTube video that I can, I'll link to in the okay, notes cool. of how he does that in oh, like time would, lapse I would love to see that it's a, it's a process so like that's like my main memory <laughs> with them so like when I hear like Billy Talent like the first thing that's going through my head is I think like Power Man 5000 like I think their guitarist had weird hair too and then I was thinking of uh, like Static X so I know the haircut you're talking about I didn't have any other context for him like he's the only person I know with that hair, I'm like, oh, cool, that's well, a him thing. It wasn't even like that though. With the hair, is what I'm pointing out. For whatever reason, I'm thinking Billy Talent's like a lot harder than what they were. Oh, a lot more metal. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, that's weird. Like he's throwing Billy Talent at me. Like I didn't know 
he was like into like hard shit. Oh, really? And, so, and then um, when they were coming out too, the only song that I had really, really heard from them was The X. And I think that was like their, their second single that was a little bit bigger in the States. Yeah, it was actually everywhere else it was didn't do as well as That's crazy, first. right? Isn't that weird? Like, yeah. yeah. We'll get into that. So like that's kind of what I remember from them. But like, I just like, I'm weird, man. Like I, I have a lot of gut reaction towards band. Like The Format is one of my favorite bands of all time. I don't know them. I, I didn't like them forever because I didn't like the way they looked. And it's not like a mean like thing. It's just like I looked at them and like, oh, they're like trying to look like hipsters. I don't want to like those well, guys. Like you really trust your gut reactions? Yeah, I, think I, I just have like gut reactions. I think of what it is. And like, yeah. I just like, I just don't look into it, you know, in, in a and deeper you, you, way. And you write your gut reactions down in stone. Yeah. And like also too, <laughs> I think like when the person is um, telling me about them, like if they just don't do like a good sales job, like it's like a, uh, <laughs> it yeah. does not help. It just builds and builds on that. So um, going back into them, I, I listened to them and they're, uh, they're not what I remembered. So like that was, that was very interesting for me. So what's your first memory with these guys? So the, you remember that uh, if you go back to episodes, uh, the side B of the episode zero when we talk about my band. Right. I mentioned that our first show we played, we did a cover of Sadie Hawkins Dance and an original at a variety show. Yes. Um, after that, a friend of mine came up and told me, he's like, hey, you guys actually remind me of this band. And he played me <laughs> Billy Talent, okay. which is not accurate what we sounded like Yeah, at all. like not even close. That's funny, though. But like I heard the first song they played, yeah. which we'll talk about when we talk about individual songs, which one it was. But he okay. played it for me. And like I just instantly fell in love. It clicked like, with you. There's something about this band that like, until we did this episode and it'll come up in the verdict, I've never been able to put my finger on why I fucking love it so much. Right. But everything about them hits me just the right way. Like every single, like the energy of it, the guitar playing, the singer, like everything about this band just always like hit me of like, they're fucking awesome. Like, wow. and it's, I've just always really loved them. Okay. What's your number one draw to them? Like what, what's the real, I don't know. I, you don't it, know. It's I, just I, weird it, clicked with you. I've had to really think about it this past week of trying to verbalize what it is they do that just fucking why i think like i love it so much like, like you want to know they, my train they... of thought with, towards you yeah sure okay so i was like he's from like the midwest mm -hmm. and he's from like the north midwest he's like right on the border of canada i was like <laughs> they probably push this a little bit harder up there than anywhere else so i was just like maybe like he doesn't realize so. it but like he, like they were getting like more radio play no i've never heard him on the radio right so like that but that, that's my natural inclination. Right, yeah. I was like when i heard it i was like okay like he's from the midwest he's up like wisconsin iowa he's right there at the border this is what they do up there like they just push there's really a whole down. state between iowa and the border yeah, i don't fucking care i mean that's close <laughs> enough it's canada dude you're so, from florida i couldn't be further away yeah so it's like you know but like that was just my like you know natural inclination yeah thing. i was I, like okay. i think it's also they're the i never got into hardcore okay i never got into metal okay billy talent is one of like you were saying like you thought i was really into like because you didn't know much about them yeah but to me they are one of the heavier bands i'm into yeah it's funny because like when you really listen to them they're like they're nowhere near but like i even had that inclination like my memories were like right these guys are a lot harder than like what i remember but also like not. if you like you remember like uh sam goody back in the day yeah a little bit i guess or like a record you remember record stores back when you could like scan the CD okay you're talking you about could, a record store you said sam goody i thought you were naming like a band or something i was just like yeah I, no, okay. sam goody was like a it was a it like a mall record store. Yeah, we didn't like have a, that in Canada. So like, I don't know. Like, I, you didn't have that in Canada. Well, you were up by like Canada, right on the border. You have different <laughs> like stores there. Well, so. what was your like big like mall record store? We had like Virgin, or we had um, another one was uh, Virgin. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's all. We yeah, had. like it's basically like that where you could scan a CD, and yeah. the barcode, and then you could hear it. Okay, yeah, cool. But you can only hear like thirty seconds. Okay, like I think if you hear like thirty seconds of like the middle of a Billy so Talent song, it's like the song, iTunes preview. Yeah. But in the store. But if you hear that thirty seconds of a Billy Talent song, it sounds much harder than it is. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's and fair. So I think it's it, aggressive. Like, is really what it is. Well, especially if you get to like the bridge where like Ben is like screaming a lot, like it sounds like it's way harder than it is. So that you Right. rest of the song no that's that's fair that's absolutely fair so that's your first memory of it just some kid came up that you guys sound like billy talent which you guys didn't well of course also if you tell me like oh this but you sound like this band that's on a major like a yeah. major label i'm gonna be like oh there must be a great band because i'm a cocky asshole i was gonna say your narcissistic <laughs> side was like i'm in love with this band this band's awesome yeah if you say you know who you remind me of and you say someone right. guess who my new best friend is that's awesome <laughs> no i mean that's that's how you get aaron to like shit you kind of have to make it think like it's his idea and then all of a sudden yeah. it's the best idea ever it's, it's the thing of like uh whatever you're trying to tell <laughs> I me found that like week one with you <laughs> so oh yeah it's just be like i'm not hearing my name <laughs> absolutely <laughs> all right so that's uh that's our memories of billy talent um you also i know you said earlier you didn't like their name like that turned you off on them yeah too. and i don't know why like i can't it just to me a like, billy talent like i don't like none of them are named it and like it's not like a it just it doesn't oh, it's, sound it's a reference to it, actually a, a uh a mockumentary about like a like super super punk band okay yeah called it's from a movie and book called uh hardcore logo okay that's awesome yeah yeah it's but really for good whatever book too. yeah like for whatever like with the name it just like doesn't do it for me like i don't know like it's so stupid you know like i, I can't explain it it's also to me it's the thing of like i've like i heard the name billy talent I'm 
like, okay, it's a band. And then I started listening to their music. And after that, I'm like, it's just like, it's just a name. Like, it, yeah. like it's just, that's what that thing is. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, it's gotten to that point with me, but it took a, it took a little bit of like coaxing. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Well, like you, you're also, you've always been really big on the outer packaging of things. Yeah. But like, that's the other thing is like, I, I and I, I'm only bringing it up when it's something like I'm not in love with or like, I don't like it. But like with them, um, it's just that name, like in just in general, like I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, I don't look at like Fall Out Boy. And I'm like, okay, name works, check. Image works, check. Band looks like a band, check. Like, it's not like I'm doing that. No, you know it's not saying? conscious. It's subconscious. Yeah. We're basically doing the like a rose by any other name thing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so. so let's talk about some uh, individual songs off this album. Okay. the first track off this album which is a fucking like it's great that's adrenaline a, shot this is how uh this is how it goes yes that's an awesome opening track and this song is uh i actually whenever like i always have this dream of like my first stand-up special sure and i always wanted to come out to this <laughs> with that opening that that quiet guitar part okay and like it's all dark and then it hits that da 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 and it's just like fireball side of the stage and oh then the stage God. drops no it's a really good opening song i could totally see it working like that it's such a fucking and it really sets the tone for this album because this album to me is a fucking like it's not until like track 10 you actually get like a breather and a soft song yeah like every track on this fucking album is just like it's like just makes you want to beat your chest of like it's adrenaline really and like fucking like testosterone just trying to say though is like this song opens up it just opens up with a really really catchy guitar like simple riff yeah and it builds in with the bass but it's also it's very the drum it's it's almost like storytelling like the opening guitar part is it's it's like uh it kind of leads you to a place of like this is like leading to something and yeah. then it just fucking it's a good build up is basically what i'm trying to say and it, each each instrument kind of comes in slowly builds it up and mm -hmm. it's something that in the album it's done in a perfect length of time but if, when you see them live they can really really stretch it yeah. out and it builds like into an epic basic like starting uh, intro song it's it's really really good oh and it's also I sent you a, a clip to this there's a full concert of theirs online yeah and what they do is they start it's all black and you just hear this guitar part that opening lick and then there's just a shadow on the other side of the curtain curtain of uh, Ian DeSau playing it basically when you're, you're in the crowd you're looking at the stage they have up just a white uh, curtain that's mm -hmm. all you see and once the guitarist actually starts playing it the light behind him lights up and you see an oversized shadow of him on the curtain and it's really fucking cool and then the bass comes in yep. and then he pops boom. up basses pops up drums come in boom he pops up and then uh ben starts singing and he comes out in front of the curtain and yeah. then like they really hit that like fucking Lead note singer just walks right out in front of the curtain crowd goes crazy and then what i loved is they don't pull the curtain up they don't pull it down they kind of just they rip tear it. it from the sides yeah, like, like fucking like a uh, hulk hogan tearing yeah. off the shirt it was really really cool and like it was really awesome because like it builds the audience up so much and the band doesn't have to do shit. They're just fucking playing the hell out of the song. Oh yeah. And it's it's crazy how good of a build up it is. It's so let's talk opener. a little bit about the actual like the composition of the song. That like okay. that guitar part, uh I've tried to learn it because mm -hmm. he does this like da 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 and like yeah. it's one guitar player playing a call and response by himself. It's absolutely insane. It's it's really, really cool. It's to the point where when you just hear it and just naturally playing guitar, you don't expect the guy to actually be doing that live. You right. know what I mean? Like you're like, okay, that's like a Oh, you expect it to be like uh, like yeah. sloppy. Yeah, like because you, you see it, like they'll do it and like they'll hit the actual rhythm parts tight, but then when they go down and do like the lead call back, it's like off and it's just and then it comes back in. Mm -hmm. He's like, it's like watching like uh, the CD play. <laughs> yeah, he's really good at guitar. It's actually at guitar. like I do. You, have you ever thought about like your dream band? If you could pick band members from any band to like like make your own band with you, who you would pick? Have you ever thought about that? No, I've never actually given that. Like crazy okay. thought. I actually I want to save that for another episode. Okay. But I'll just foreshadow by my guitar player I've always wanted to have in my band is the end of song. So we're gonna build like an ultimate band, basically, is what like, we're gonna like do. Like you die and go to heaven, you can pick anybody live I or dead. I really like that idea. We can build up to that too. Well, we'll save that for another episode. That's awesome. Okay. So the this song, this is how it goes, what it's about. Okay, so this song comes out and the a lot of the lyrics are uh you can take my mind, but you'll never take my soul. Right. Uh, uh open up my head, rinse out my mind. And uh Ben was asked in an interview, like, what's this song about? And he said it's hey, it's about 
friend of mine who has... Uh, and ben is the vocalist. Yeah, I, I keep saying his name because I've watched so many interviews this week. I'm like, yeah, you know Benny. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm just uh-huh. trying to make sure everybody else knows where we're at here. So yeah, the vocalist Ben. Okay. Uh, ben Koala Witch. We're going to stick with Ben. Yep. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> or the vocalist. Um, they asked him, hey, what's this song about? And he's yeah. like, it's about a friend of mine who has MS or multiple sclerosis. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad I got that on the first try. <laughs> that's that's not easy. That's a tough one. <laughs> so he has a friend of mine has MS and like, they're like okay. And then uh, it was a while later, like maybe a year or so, uh, uh-huh. their drummer on their website or somewhere, he put up like a blog post and be like, hey, I'm the one that that song's about. I have MS. That's insane. And if you don't know what MS is, it's a it's a degenerative neuro disorder. Yes. Um, where basically your brain and the nerves in it start to decay and start to misfire. It's very painful. It has a lot of weird symptoms. It's well, one of those diseases that affects so many things. Your nerve endings have receptors and mm-hmm. they have multiple receptors. And what yeah. ends up happening is, is your brain's no longer to make the connection to the right ones. And that's why it's called multiple sclerosis. So it has uh, multiple, and basically your brain just stops talking to your body correctly. It's essentially and it's, what it is. I know it can be really painful, and also the symptoms of it can vary so much. Yeah, it's not a disease that once you have it, you like you go through certain stages, and it has right. a very tight. It's it's different for everybody. There are different types of it, but it's you know it affects everybody in a different way. It's insane though. And like, if you also think about like the because like I've listened to every Billy Talent album because I am a huge fan of them. Right. Uh, his drumming is we talk about this is like there's almost like a bingo game of this show yeah. every episode we bring up how good a, you have to be of a drummer for this yeah, genre you do he's fucking he's creative he's very good he's amazing like he's very succinct and like yeah. mechanically on time you know this is a band that uh, all instrumentally each one is an all star and so we're just gonna jump ahead a little bit cause like we might come back in the future and do another episode about another Billy Talent album but, okay cool uh, current day where we're at with this with yeah. him having MS uh, Aaron Solo Olniuk I hope I said that right I really try to be respectful so aaron the drummer yes. so their last album came out uh last year called afraid of the heights okay he um was not able due to a relapse of his condition he's right. like trying to you know rework his beds and stuff he wasn't able to play man that stinks on the album or and he wasn't he's not touring with them They're yeah so having, they basically had to bring in a replacement drummer in all intents and purposes uh, a, a fill-in yeah. yeah but it's the thing of like he's still officially in the band he's still no of course tours with them as much as he can but he doesn't play he was uh it was really interesting too is a lot of the promo material for the new album yeah it has the pictures with him and the fill-in drummer. Yeah, that's really cool. So they actually did like a five-piece. Yeah. So yeah. they're and the fill-in drummer is uh, Jordan Hastings, the drummer from Alexis on Fire. Oh, cool. It's an awesome band. And those two are really good friends. Like they've toured like because uh, uh, there's a Wikipedia page for every Billy Talent tour except their first one. Yeah. And uh, Alexis on Fire has basically toured with them every huge tour they've done. That's incredible. See, I never put those two together because back you know in the 2002 2006 mm-hmm. era, I was I was really into Alexis on Fire. They're like one of my like you I know, don't think top, I've ever heard of top 15 bands. They're post hardcore band it's all screaming but oh it's, that's probably why I've never heard yeah but it's like really really complicated and unnatural guitar structures and the songs are not like you know intro verse chorus yeah. you know the song might be like two minutes of music and then screaming <laughs> it's like oh but it's, it's 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 really really good I saw them a couple times live I was blown away by them yeah. so I saw them on a tour with Monin Monin's another Canadian band from like that that time that's a really good band too you would like Monin a lot are they probably yeah I'll, I'll look them up yeah definitely take a look at them so but yeah that's kind of where everything is right now okay with him and his battle and also I just want to like you know me and John both want to just like we're really hoping like he can play on the next album and yeah no I mean that's that's horrible I think it's really yeah. cool that they're sticking together and they're making it like a you know a thing yeah they're, they're, the they're brothers they've been playing together yeah. for almost 25 years that's really rare it's it's tough when you get to a certain level and you're able to keep egos in check and you know everyone's able to pull their own weight and you know like I said like these guys are very mature they did everything the correct and right way they, they got their degree before they fell in love yeah <laughs> so you know that's how you do it it's the Canadian way and so and going forward for like the rest of this album the songs we're going to talk about it was so hard for me to pick because like I'm kind of directing a lot of these choices because this was like my pick. Yeah, this, this is episode. your baby. Like that's you know. Uh, and I, I really couldn't figure out because I could talk about every single song on this album, right? Uh, with the same passion and like level of interest. Okay. But just to like, I had to narrow it down, so I picked. This is how it goes because you can't not talk about that song. Okay. So that's the opening song. We just covered that. Yep. And the next four, I'm just gonna go through the four singles off this album. I'm basically letting someone else choose for me what to uh, talk about. Okay, that works for me. So let's go into uh, "Try Honesty." Okay, that's gonna be the first single from 2003. Yeah. Okay. And this cool. song is this is their big big hit like a lot of people if you've only heard one song of them you probably heard Try Honest that's eh? insane to me because like when I listen to their collection off of this album to mm-hmm. me it's their least radio or like hit friendly song really yeah because like it's it's a really long intro Um, it's not a catchy chorus and I'm not saying that in a bad way like it doesn't like you know everything is all up to like you know discretion but it does not follow your normal pop radio like to me when a band is on a major record label usually the first song that they put out yeah. tends to not garner the attention and it's the second single like we saw that with Yellow Card Yellow Card Ocean Avenue yeah was like what was that that was the first single and then no no second 
second. Their first one was... Uh, a Way Away? Yep. Yeah. And so we all thought Ocean Avenue was. So to me, the X is the one that I, I know. And it's one naturally I think a lot of people in the States know. It's so. also, it's the... Uh, do you have anything you want to say about Triana? Do you want to go right to the X? No, no, I'm fine with this. Like, I'm talking about this, but like, even like when you listen to this song, though, it's just a very long, like, drawn out, it's a very mellow song. Yeah. It just doesn't have your normal well, progression. Well, it has, it has a very have. mellow verse yep. and then a, a big chorus, and then like the bridge is like really fucking hardcore. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a really good song, but like, I'm just saying from a single standard, I was shocked to see like it was an actual single on the CD. Yeah, no, totally. It's a great one. We'll probably play that for one of our breaks coming up, but like, okay. Triana's uh was their first single. Their second single was The X, like the we X. were just talking about. So The X is much more it's almost like the the chorus on the x is much more sing-songy yeah it's a more sing-along and it's it's the structure wise it follows your normal like pop structure but yeah you have a catchy intro goes right into the verse right into a catchy chorus it's all cookie cutter you know what i mean well and the the, the chorus of the why would you put me da, 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 yeah. da, 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 da. like da, it, it da, is yeah it's very you can sing along a lot more mm-hmm. and Absolutely. you're right it the 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 uh you're right the format and the uh structure of the song is much more identifiable right. to like a layman listener Right, of course. And also, too, the thing that I like about this song is it is, um, out of the entire album, my humble opinion, it's their most radio-friendly song that they have on the album. Oh, sure. Right. right. I, I, I don't really... I can't His, disagree um, with that. And also... I don't really think anyone will object to radio friendly because to me that doesn't mean best. That just means radio friendly. Right. And also, I'm just, what I'm saying though is I, I like that it does capture his uniqueness and his style of singing. Like, it's a very unique and it's not the most radio friendly style, like at all. No, no. Well, that's the thing of, I think a lot of people with Billy Talent, they're going to be, it's, it's a very hit or miss band with people. It's exactly. You're all in or you're next. And I think it is, it has a lot to do with his voice because, like, I, I fucking, like, I think it's beautiful. I love the way he sings. Yeah. I love the, the the emotion and the range of like emotion. Like he can be really angry, he can be remorseful, he can be yeah. wistful. Yeah. But I also it's a thing. Of, it's the reason why I can't listen to Coheed and Cambria. Okay. Coheed is a band that I know oh, for wow. a fact is amazing. I can't get past Claudio's voice. You just brought up the American equivalent of what Billy Town is. That that's in my that you'll, that'll come up later in my verdict. But yeah. yeah. No. No. It's the they're the American American version of Billy Town is Coheed yeah, and Cambria. Yeah. Like they're not hugely famous, but their fans are loyal as fuck. Yeah. No. That's crazy. It's like every things there too and, like, and there's a lot of equivalent of like their guitar players yeah. are amazing their yeah. rhythm sections are super strong yeah no it's crazy and their singers like it's huh. like it's that thing of like my friend uh i used to do covers with a buddy of mine like we right. just kind of played together and he would cover uh coheed songs yeah and every time he'd start playing i'm like that's fucking i love that guitar part it's amazing i yeah. love that that melody i'm like yeah is this yours he's like no it's coheed i'm like oh and every time i would then go <laughs> I would go, to me, Kohi just sounds like Rush putting out new oh, material. Oh, that's the, yeah. <laughs> that but is, like that's always they definitely have a major Rush influence. In that. Well, it's like really his vocals, that like that's the thing of yeah. like it's not a comment on if they're good or bad. I can't get past it. To me, it was kind of like a, a slap of cold water in the face, though, because until like you brought up the Kohi comparison. Like, I kind of look at Big Town. I'm like, okay, yeah, they're doing it. But then when you say, like, you don't get Coheed, to me, I'm just like, oh, Coheed's good. Like, they're just normal. So it's weird because now I can see how you look at the way you look at Coheed is yeah. the way I look at Billy Talent. And right. the way that you uh, hear Billy Talent is the way that I hear uh, Coheed. So it's really interesting to hear that comparison and kind of just put it into perspective for me. I think it's really hit or miss of like, but that, that to me is the example of like, I know Coheed's good. I just can't get past it. Like, it's, there's like, there's, there's a door that I just, I just can't for, cross the threshold. For anybody that hasn't heard Coheed before, and we're going to constantly do this. We're going to reach out to people well, that don't let's know. Let's just play, uh, what's a good Coheed song? A good example. Uh, do Devil in Jersey City. That was like the single from their first album. Okay, I'll drop like 30 seconds yeah, of that because it comes right in with his voice. So like that's uh, the right way to hear it. The Jersey bounds And sound asleep They'll find you at your most vulnerable Position So yeah, that, that's kind of where I come from. But like the X to me, it's a very sing-songy song. I like it a lot, but it's also, uh, I can understand why you think that's radio friendly. And I also, because the X also wasn't one that they were going to put out as a single. The, the label said, hey, this is a single. Oh yeah, no, you can totally tell why. But like, I just know from like my memory of back in that time, the X is like, that was on the radio or like that was out there. It's like, that's how I would hear a Billy Talent. So let's go to their third single. This this is the song that I brought up that someone told me, this is the first Billy Talent song I ever heard was River Below. Okay. So third single, 2004. 
But what, what's really interesting about this song to me is this uh, call and response they do in the verse. Yes. So Ian and John do the backup and they do like the first half and then Ben responds. So it's like da 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 da. Okay. And that's and, and they really that, there's something they kind of stumbled on in this song and they reuse la- in later songs. Okay. Of kind of a tool they can use to express different things. But I really love that call and response of this song. And then also the uh, the chorus of this song is really really catchy too. Yeah. No, the chorus in the song is really good. Um, what I like from this song uh, that really, really stands out is, um, and this might have been the song too that you're kind of talking about just there, is uh, they started using Ian with the lead singer on the album, which is not something all bands do. Usually bands, when they when they build their harmonies up, uh, there are cases where they will use their actual other bandmates because mm-hmm. like, they're going to do it live. Oh, I know what you're going but for. But for a band to actually commit that to do it on their album, that is kind of a, a bigger step. So normally like when you hear like, I'm just going to use Green Day for an example. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times when you actually hear the song and all the harmonies are laid out, it's Billy Joel laying the harmony. He's to layering Joel. with himself. Yeah, um, like you will sometimes add in Mike Durnt into it, and he will be on it. But the primary focus is Billy Joel on Billy Joel. Like um, Bohemian Rhapsody with Queen. Yeah, every vocal in that song is just Freddie Mercury over himself, and it's like seventy tracks of him doing harmonies. Yeah, and it's absolutely insane. And back then, with the technology they had, it was all yeah. cut and paste. But the actual cutting. I think that's another thing that draws me to Billy Talent because yeah. my other favorite band of all time, Rancid. Yeah, Tim the is the lead singer for the most part, and then yeah. Lars. But like they. They trade off songs, like their they songs do. one sings on. Yeah. Their backups are always done that way on the album. Right. Uh, on their early albums, even Matt Freeman, who has yeah. almost kind of like a little bit of a Kermity voice, sings songs. The reason why I wanted to bring up Focus for it, though, was because even in Rancid's case, Lars will sometimes do primary singing on songs. Yeah. So there's a reason why they're doing what they're doing. So for a band, though, to have a designated lead singer and then also have the other member that's actually going to have like major, major parts but never actually be like uh, another primary, primary mm-hmm. single, very, very rare for bands to do that. But it gives them such a unique sound because their their voices are their instrument technically in that aspect. And so you're creating something that cannot be duplicated Complicated. It's really cool. And since their singer Ben has such a unique timbre to his voice, yeah. and then also Ian has Ian DeSalle, the guitar player, does a lot like because uh, live John, their bass player, also sings with him to yeah, give of course, more, to build it out. Mm-hmm. But uh, Ian's voice underneath this lead singer's voice, it yeah. has this very unique sound to it that you'd never hear before. No, that's exactly what it is. That's why they do it. And not a lot of bands do that. Yeah, not a lot of bands do that, believe it or not. So it was well, uh, pretty cool. I actually cool. always hate it. I remember when my band recorded our album I'm, and he was like, yeah, we're going to do this part where there's like a harmony here. I'm like, okay, who's, who's going to sing? Saying that yeah. he's like I am and I'm like but won't it sound weird having you sing with yourself <laughs> And then he pointed out every band does that. And that's then I pointed out Billy Talent and Rancid. Oh, that's funny. And stuff. And he's yeah. like, oh, I'm like, oh, I guess I never knew that was a thing I was drawn to. But I, I love it when a band does that. That's cool. Yeah. We started doing it towards the end of our band. But like we were like, you know, three or four like major works in before we started doing it. And did you guys do it on the album? At the end. Yeah. But like, and also it was a conscious decision. Like I was actually our producer, like basically was like, I want to this time around instead of using the lead singer and just, you know, harmonizing himself, like we're going to bring in the other guitarist that I had in my band. Yeah. And like he's going to actually do it because when you guys do that live it actually sounds really really good and that's the other thing too is like you have to have another person in that band that has complete control mm-hmm. and can also adjust live to the actual like structure of how their voice is sounding harmonizing with the other guy it's really right. hard to do oh and again even it just, just shows singing these guys and playing guitar by yourself is really fucking hard right and just shows these guys are like on like brain surgeon level like when like the shit that they're doing it's absolutely insane the technicalities of like oh, what they're doing like the, the talent level is off the charts to the point like like we were saying about yeah, like, it's like savant it's unfair style. yeah it's like savants that's kind of a thing that stands out with that song that I really, really liked with that. And that was kind of like building off of what you were saying. So what do you want to do? Let's go to the fourth single now? Yeah. So the fourth single, um, and this one, even if it wasn't a single I was going to bring up. Yeah. Because it's the most different sounding. Yeah. It's also the most emotional song in the album. It's called Nothing to Lose. Never played truth to death. makes me like like tear up a little bit like this is a song that i really connect to because it's really about the isolation and feeling outcast and not right. feeling wanted in like when you're younger yeah no it's a, for anybody that doesn't know this song is about suicide 
basically what it is. Oh, it's, uh, yeah, it's... Which is, like, it's almost like it's interesting. Like, it was kind of, like, a staple of that time zone from, like, 99 to 2003. If you were in, like, a punk rock band and you did an mm -hmm. album, you needed a suicide anthem. Well, because, <laughs> like, it lot. was such a huge problem. Yeah, no, it is. It's very big. And uh, the thing that I liked about it was the way that they approached this. I was reading, they didn't donated to a, mm -hmm. like, suicide charity, like, themselves, basically, yeah. out of their own pockets. And they were matching people that were actually going out and buying the single. Because it was not originally a planned single for the CD and it ended up being added into it and they were able to do all of that with it. Right. Um, the music video, they have, I think, a suicide hotline at the end that they tell people to reach out to if you need to. Yeah. It's it's really depressing. This is, um to me, it's like Pearl Jam's uh, Jeremy Spoken Class Today. Or Adam Song. Well, no, I'm just saying like where Jeremy Spoken Class Today, the, the reason why that song is so powerful is because it's about a kid going in and like shooting up the class. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, you kind of hear the whole song and as it's going and then at the end you realize like Jeremy Spoken <laughs> class today. You realize like he shot up the class basically. Yeah. And uh, this song you realize at the end he killed himself. And yeah. it's like a, the but, other songs don't really kind of hit that. You know what I mean? Well, this one really hits the like the uh, first person perspective of it yeah. that a lot of songs don't. Yeah, it's completely different. It really does feel like I'm like being a teenager again and I'm really upset. I'm because I, I had depression. Like I've. Uh, I don't really talk about it a lot, but I used to cut myself. I have like yep. uh, attempted suicide. Like, right. so this song, like, I really understand where it's coming from. It's so weird though, because like you're always saying, like, I, I pay like really close attention to like lyrics and whatnot. But, like, whenever like these sadder anthems come on, they really affect you. And I can, I come from that background. I can see where you're coming from. I can. I, I'm not gonna get into a personal stuff too much on this episode. But for me, it doesn't do anything. Like, I just hear them. I'm like, oh, okay. It's like, this is their... It's almost like, I, I look at it too binary. You know what I mean? These are the only songs where I really notice what they're talking about. Otherwise, okay. like, I never really think about it. Like, I just right. hear... Like, just basically my heart starts to beat in tempo with a song <laughs> and I start to, like, bang my head That's and then fair. everything disappears. Okay. But these ones, I actually sit like... They, they resonate. Yeah. So out of, like... So you, you listed here the singles and whatnot. What's your favorite song on this album if you had to pick one like what's it to you and why honestly this album is one of my favorite albums of all time period okay. like okay. outside of like genre everything like okay if you ask me to pick my five top favorite albums of all time this comes up on it let me put it this way um you have to pick one song right now or i'm gonna blow your head off what song do you pick off of this album uh this is how it goes this is how it goes. So you're going to go with the opening song. Yeah, because that, that's so also, really that, that song is like, that's honestly, it's, it's so good. Out of out of opening songs, that's definitely one of the better ones I've ever heard. It's really, 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 really good. What's so weird about Billy Talent to me is that like, are they an emo band? Are they a screamo band? Are they a punk band? Are they a pop punk band? Yeah. And the answer to any one of those on their own is no. Right. But the answer to all of them is kind of yes. Like there's nothing right. else that they are better quantified as. Right. And like, I think from my perspective, that's, kind of only the only problem that I have with them at all is just kind of what you were saying there but to I me that's what makes them better than every other fucking yeah. band and like it's so like for me like it, it's like the they saying, don't like, sound like a genre they sound like Billy Talent but if I had to pick a, a song off this album though that's gonna be my favorite song on the entire album um, it's absolutely Cut the Curtain like that's like oh that's a good one but again this kind of shows I really like the heavy thrash type of uh, well and the opening riff on this too is like well the opening riff to this is like there's a, there's a band that I love d called Reggie and the Fall Effect. And oh, yeah. They yeah. have a side. The Bridging the Full Effect is like, it's like a spoof band, but they have also a side band that's a Swedish death metal band. Yeah. And this is like something they would come out and like play. <laughs> and it's it's almost like spoofing Swedish death metal. But like Billy Talent's doing it here and it's really good. But here's the thing. It's not super metally sounding. It's like, not. It's, it's just like... Doo, 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 well, also, doo, doo, what I love about Billy Talent, yeah. and this comes from playing bass and as a person, like a, yeah. as... I also... On this show, we talk about pop punk, emo punk. Yes. I also, one of my other favorite things in the world is Motown. Okay, cool. I listen to a, like, a lot of Motown. I listen to a lot of soul music. Okay. Um, one of the things that like I love about Billy Talent, and you can't say this about a lot of pop punk bands and a lot of punk bands, is they have groove. Like There is like some bounce to it. There is some movement to it. Like There's a lot of things about Billy Talent that have this kind of like this like this flow to it, this kind of like, like it almost makes you kind of want to move your hips. Like It has a groove, and a lot of this music normally doesn't no it has exactly. soul it has soul like that's really what it comes down to but yeah no this was one um basically when i'm listening to these albums like i i just put them on so all week that's what i'm doing which i know i start to like the band when their music's stuck in my head mm -hmm. i'm not listening to them anymore 
Like this wasn't a band that I wanted to like go out of my way and like open up. But it wasn't like I was gonna be like, well, I'm just not gonna like them. I just like I was kind of guarded going into it. And um, once I got to this song, and it happened a couple of days into it, I had already listened to the album a couple of times. But it just comes out of nowhere. And for me, like I just like I really really like it. So yeah, let's just go quick, and I'll just play cut the curtains. We'll come back and kind of talk our big topic this episode. Okay, cool. That sounds good. That's a really good song. Calm down. So uh, one of the big topics I wanted to talk about this episode, kind of a general topic, because okay. it feels like it's a really natural episode to bring it up in. Uh, screaming in music. Fan, okay. not a fan. Hit Love me. it. Love it. Really? Yeah. No, like this, one of my favorite bands of all time is The Blood, and that's all screaming. I've never heard them, but I could have guessed. Yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah, that's a little, a little cliche. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm a, I'm a complete fan of it. But why are you bringing it up, though? Because I can't stand it, except Billy Talent is the only band that screams that I like. Billy Talent doesn't scream. What, what would you call that then? Screeching. You know, it's like, it's not like a... Rah, 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 rah. Well, I'm not, I'm not talking like... I also hate that, like the right. Cookie Monster shit. Yeah, like the gutter scream. Yeah, but know. I like... Just screaming in general, I've never liked in music. Yeah. But like Billy Talent, like I love the way he... Because also, I can understand what the fuck he's saying. I don't like Screamo because I'm like, you just make it fucking noise. Well, yeah, and like it got weird in Screamo too, where it was almost like, I'm going to like... E- emphasize a word that you just said almost like how like a rapper's like hype man would be like yeah what and like repeat like what you said in screamo they would just scream like the backing thing so i i get how it's see weird. i don't mind it if it's like a backing or underneath thing okay the reason i like it in billy town is it's done for emphasis it's done right. with finesse and it's done with intentionality right i can't stand beginning to end scream like the band under oath yeah can't fucking stand them yeah i mean that's that's pretty intense like with their screaming that they do there like metalcore like screaming yeah. shit like i just i don't well, fucking like it yeah i mean like so like i don't know like I know like our, our shows aren't supposed to be like that. We actually we open up we're like we're not, this is good, this is bad, this is that, this is that. Right. I, I'm and not you're saying not doing that. Bad. No, I'm not I saying you like are it. too. I'm just saying like I don't consider Billy Talent at all. Really? Like on a scale of one to ten, ten being like a screaming band. I would give Billy Town a 1.8. I don't do points. Well, like you can't say they're a one because they're definitely screaming more than like right. sugar cold. So this was this was my problem that I have with Billy Town. Okay. Okay. So, or I have a band in general is when um you see them live and they do a lot more screaming than what they do in their album. Billy Town does that. Yeah. yeah, and I hate that. Really? Yeah, because I'm like you either do it in the album or you don't do it. Like it's so annoying because it's like I get it. Like you want to like you it's your passion and like you're a screaming band and like you have a lot of like um emphasis into the music, but like record that then like. Th- when I'm going to go see you live, I don't want to like, oh, okay, you guys really wish you were a screaming band, but like, you know, you can't do that. So you're going to do like your singing on see, the I don't, CD. I don't get the feeling of that at all. Like to me, the reason I like Billy Talent and why I think they're so good live mm-hmm. is Which that- they are very good live, like technically very good. And well, the thing too, when they're live, like it, they're not playing the fucking album. Like they're playing the songs. Right. But like, and they're not but sloppier. They don't, they, to me, they don't write albums. Like, like when I listen to Billy Talent one, the one that we've been talking about all, like it's not a like start to finish, like you need to listen to this. It's like a group of songs. Well, and that just, changes more with their newer stuff too because okay. well, this is also their first else. album of course but like that's what i'm just trying to say so like that was the one thing i did notice when i was watching them live like he gets a lot more screaming. well he also he doesn't sing the song exactly the way it is on the album in general right like he really and i actually i prefer that like yeah. he, he sings it much more in the moment because in the same sense when i would go see a screamo band live and you would find out that the screamer can't scream live that would annoy the fuck out of me too because i'm like well then see, don't do it i can the understand because yeah. if you like screaming yeah so like that was the main thing because i love screaming i just hate when you go see a band and like all of a sudden now because they're live they're a screaming band when you hear them on the album they're not like it i uh me. One of my biggest memories too of uh, Screamo, because uh-huh. screaming, screaming, and Screamo and like metal, like melodic yeah. hardcore was really big in like the scenes in Iowa when I was playing. Oh yeah, well I mean you had Iowa, yeah. So and I, I, I just I don't like it. Yeah. But one of my big memories is I was at a show in Des Moines at Vaudeville Muse, which is like a music club there back in the day. Right, it might, it might still be there. I don't I don't go to Des Moines, guys. Yeah, we were seeing this band, their Screamo band, and their uh, singers like he does the thing where he, like he goes back, he puts his foot up on the bass drum, and he's like screaming like rah rah the rah, leaning rah, forward rah, screen, rah. and then he barfs all over the drummer. Oh. <laughs> like, You're talking about the stance, so it looks like George Washington on the boat yep. crossing the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's okay. crossing the Delaware. He barfs on the drummer. Yeah, like he's screaming so hard that eventually, like something just happened with his throat, and all of a sudden, like he like and like it happened to him, like it had to be a surprise to him. Maybe his body he threw up a, on the mic. Maybe his body's allergic to shitty music. <laughs> <laughs> like, but like, yeah, he barfs like, like it just uh, happened all of a sudden. Like, 
and like it was on the microphone too. Like he uh, didn't even have like the reflex. Oh man, that's awesome. And, like, and the drummer doesn't fucking stop playing. Oh, so it's just like hitting it everywhere. <laughs> and it's like splashing uh, off the snare. It's like that. You ever seen that movie Stand By Me when they're having the pie eating contest? Yeah. And the one kid pukes and they all just start puking mm-hmm. and it just keeps. Oh my god, but that's like, disgusting. <laughs> that's so hard, man. Did you did you hear like the other uh, the last time this band played live, man? He <laughs> puked all over the drummer and it made the drummer play harder. It was like they had two bass drums, it's man. Like, it's like some fucking Guar shit. Yeah, so bad. Guar, don't even get me started on that band. We'll do like Halloween special, maybe. They'll be involved uh, somehow. Don't, please don't make me listen to Guar. No, I think I'm just going to dress up like one of them. I'll tell you. You're going to walk in, I'm going to have abs painted on, and I'm going to be like, <laughs> going to have a sledgehammer. Have you seen uh, the second um, Indiana Jones movie? Yeah. Where they have that big, like, satanic thing underground, and, like everyone has face paint and shit on? Yeah, and like he pulls the heart out. I, I for like a week straight, because I didn't see Indiana Jones at all for the first time until like a year ago. Okay. Or there's no, like two years ago now. Yeah. Uh, and just for a week straight, I kept like, tweeting pictures of a guar concert <laughs> and then the next week would be a picture of that that scene i'm like which one is the temple of doom and which one is a guar concert that's awesome that's that's <laughs> like the worst it's om- that indiana jones is almost as bad as the fourth one that's a really bad Indiana <laughs> Jones. The fourth one is almost as bad as Guar. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I bet you, though, if Guar was in this room right now, you wouldn't be saying that. You would not tell those guys to their face that they're bad. I would just say, I don't like you. They would make a meat sandwich out of you. If they can... It, you ever it, seen their videos? No. Oh, my God, man. You gotta live. I don't like it, so I don't... Like, I don't... I, don't I dig hate deeper it, too. Into it. I love... Like, things I hate, I love just, like, soaking in it. See, I don't enjoy... I'm like, I'd just rather, like, I'm just gonna go find something I like. Oh, man, yeah. That's a good way to look at life, I guess. Yeah, that's why I'm so much more happy. So what do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, can't argue with that. Um, so let's get back to this guy's hair. Okay. Okay. Let's just yeah. Let's not go to anything. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Like when you see that though, like what do you think? I think it looks cool. I, I honestly think like oh, it's a little Jimmy Neutron. Like it doesn't like annoy you though. Like you don't see it. And you're like no. Well, why, why would I care what anyone else does? It just like it annoys me. Like his hair is like that. <laughs> I have no idea why. No, I, I do, but it, it amuses me how much it bugs you. But like, like it really though, like it really bothered yeah, me. Yeah, and to me, I'm just like, uh, okay, that's cool, that's the thing. And like, I also too like it is unique. Like he's recognized, like it's, and he keeps doing it. Right, like, but I mean that that was the whole thing. It's so also, like, it's not as tall as it used to be. But the the thing with him too is like, it, everyone thinks like Billy Talent. So you see him, and you're like, okay, that's Billy Talent right there. <laughs> And you're like, no, it's not. So like, that was like kind of like the whole thing with it too. Like, where it just annoyed the fucking shit out of me. Because he's a great guitarist. If you just fucking play, like it would. Yeah, if you listen to it. Yeah, it's so. Also, I heard them before I ever saw. So what? What are your thoughts? Like, this is a question I have for you. When it comes to a band, what are your thoughts when your lead singer isn't the focus of your band? Because in my opinion, that's that's the guy. Like you're looking at him. He's playing like crazy guitar riffs. He's got his hair done up. When you think he also he produces all their albums. I was gonna say yeah. When you when you see like the cutout of their albums, like it just shows like the silhouettes. He's like the one you see in it. So like, how does that make? How does that work for you when the lead singer? Oh, I I don't care who the front man is. Right, but isn't it weird? It's not weird for you like in any. any sense well, of Fall Boy, Pete's uh, Patrick's not the front man. Pete is the front man. He doesn't sing. He's, yeah, but, he's but like the front Pete, man. But he like wouldn't really do anything. Like when he would play, like he wouldn't draw attention to himself. So like you would I think still. He does. Yeah, but I mean he's just standing there. He's he got also his, he does all the talking between on. songs. Like he's like true. there's like uh, Pete Wentz is unquestionably the front man of Fall Boy, and okay. I don't care. That's really interesting. Yeah, you kind of killed my argument there, didn't you? Well, it, it, like it just it doesn't because also like I, I always it's so weird like, like in I, my band, Mike Alex he sang and he did a lot of the talking between songs. But over time, I'd start to do that more because also. Oh, I, I did. I, I did. had like a like I had like a three minute bit about. I did all of the talking in between our songs, all of it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so are you the front man, or, you, or is the singer the front man? Yeah, but the, 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 the singer was clearly the front man, though. He was the attention was always on him because like even this guy, like when you see him like sing live, he kind of just stands there. He wears like a, a white shirt. Oh no no no! I watched uh, like the concerts I've seen on YouTube anyway. Like Ben is fucking their singer is like killing it. Like he right. Is, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is like he's. It's not that he's. He just he he's just a guy. It's kind of like what it is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, nah, like. I, I understand the words. I don't think I understand what your your oh, subtext is. You yeah, know, you kill me with the Pete Wentz thing because you're spot on. I just like <laughs> fall apart. So. <laughs> I do that to you. I do that to, to you a lot. Where I just happen to pick no, this one episode, card. This episode, you're on fire. Like you've done it to me. Apparently, twice I now. do it a lot, and I don't do it on purpose. It's literally like you're talking about frontman, and the first thing that pops in my head of like the non-singer frontman is well, Pete because Wentz. like it's to me though, it's different because Pete Pete's an attention whore, and Pete's making himself the frontman of the band. Yeah, so, but like he's like the frontman is the attention whore, right? But it's also the like it's like known. So like, but Billy Idol, Billy Talent, sorry. <laughs> It's okay. It's a great day for a white wedding. Yeah. Billy Talent. Like, I don't know. It's just like when you see him with the hair and uh, it's just like to me, like it, 
it, it just annoys me. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it's all just I think say. of like you don't have like it, it, like you haven't been able to like because you brought this up like during our break when we went off air and I went down for a smoke like right. You you've really brought up that you can't articulate it, but like there's just something there that just like sits wrong in your stomach. With yeah, it. like there's just like I, there's something off. Like I just I don't know what it is, but they're not bad, and I'm not saying they're bad. It's just like it's just not for me. But like that was like my main thing is like it just it annoys me with the hair I think is what it is and like I, I've kind of like I said that before that the name kind of sounds like a name that you would name yourself if you weren't from that genre and you were trying to like be like hey I'm part of this genre like look I'm what, what genre though do you think they're going for with that well they're clearly like they're going for punk rock is like clearly what they they're trying to do well because to me like again like they don't sound like any and then other that also sound. too that might come back to part of the aspect I don't like about them is like the passion thing I was saying where it kind of just feels like they're doing it is like they don't have a background genre and that's not because they're individual. See, I disagree. I, I think the thing is like, because like they're also a band that doesn't listen to only punk rock. Because right. like you've also said in past episodes, you don't like a, any band where like everyone in the band's favorite band is Taking Back Sunday, for example. Right. Um, and I agree because like then they just sound like a shitty Taking Back Sunday. Right. Like Billy Talent to me, like they have, they don't, like I, I keep bringing up Led Zeppelin because there's almost not a straight punk corollary to them. Right. Because they have such a groove to them. They have such a almost like 70s rock rawness. And like to me, they don't sound like The Clash. The Clash is another band that like if you listen to London Calling, are they a punk band? Are they a ska band? Are they a roots band? They're they're like they you call like them a punk band. The Clash is a punk band. They sound like like the Britain's versions of the Ramones. No, they don't at all. Have you heard London Calling? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that album is more ska than it is punk. There's not even one song on there that you would say is a clear cut punk song on London Calling. London Calling. And, uh, How is that a straight? That doesn't I'm sound just like saying, the Ramones. Like, they're, they're, Punk wasn't even established yet. They they sound like clear punk to me. No, because this is after like their first the first Clash album, like mm -hmm. uh, Career Opportunities, straight punk song. Right. London Calling though uh, has much more roots, reggae, and ska vibe than it does punk. But they're still a punk band. Right. Like the Clash to me they is have a, punk a thing unto themselves. Right. They have a punk attitude. Same with Billy which Talent. Which is what punk is. They sound like Billy Talent Punk's before attitude. they sound like it's punk. Punk's attitude though. Punk isn't like a accords. Punk is almost like a lifestyle and philosophy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's why like when one of your guitarists just randomly starts spiking his hair out after you make a major record label album. Well, he was doing that before, though. If you see old Pez pictures, he no, was I'm talking about doing Benji, that. But oh, you want to go back to Good Charlotte again? I'm saying like punk is a you're lifestyle. You're just bringing up everything we don't agree on? <laughs> 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 Let's go to a quick last break here. We'll give our grades what we think of this album and Billy Talent. We'll be right back. We're back, and we're gonna close up now with Billy Talent. This has been a this has been a lot of fun for me. How's it been for you, Aaron? Oh, I get I got to talk about Billy Talent, and like I got to make someone listen to Billy Talent. I'm having a great fucking time. Yeah, man, and uh, it was it was good though. I, I have to say, I was not uh, disappointed. So thank you. Really? Yeah, no, really. Like it was um definitely... as much as much shade as you've thrown at a dude's haircut. It's really annoying. To me. <laughs> Like really, he's probably a nice guy. Like I probably oh if, dude, they're all super he would nice never, guys. They're Canadian though too. Like they, I'm sorry. I think like they're even comma. nice on that. Oh, I think really? they're even on a Canadian scale. They're particularly nice. Like you know what's funny about the Billy Talent uh, Wikipedia? Uh, there isn't a controversy section. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, there's not. There's not. Like honestly, like I would love to see like their histories too, with, like the law. They have like all their parking tickets are probably paid. Also, for this one, before we get to our verdict, I want to kind of. There's something new I've been thinking about. I want to start doing in episodes. Okay, what's that? If you like X, then you'll like Y. Okay, yeah, I saw that in the notes. What do you mean by that? We have a lot of bands that we talk about, and like if someone listens to last week, they love Good Charlotte. They probably don't know Billy Talent. So we played some clips and we talk about them a lot. What bands? If you like this band, you'll also like Billy Talent, or if you like Billy Talent, you also might like this band. Like, kind of give some like specific recommendations or kind of how things would connect. Okay. Uh, if you got anything for that. Well, no, I mean, like, let's hear what you say. It's your it's your idea here. You've thought about it. What do you have here? To me, if you love uh, Rise Against Led Zeppelin and okay. Rage Against the Machine, sure, you'll love Billy Talent. That's actually that's a really really good comparison. I definitely see the Rise Against a lot. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, too, the same vibe that they have with Rage Against the Machine, where you have the singer the guitarist the bassist mm -hmm. and the drummer but the musically they're like beyond talented yeah so and it's also, a really interesting like take. they don't sound anything like Rage Against the Machine but also they do have the the lyrics and the energy of the singer is yeah. a lot like Zach of Rage Against the Machine okay that's um, fair I could see that do you have anything that you think like because like, you have a different bank of knowledge than me yeah no I mean like I and like I'm not I, they're they're tough for me like they're uh, they're Billy Talent like to me exactly what I've been saying yeah no I, you're, you're right <laughs> I can I can see that um 
I'm trying to think. If you hate the way the guitarist in Static X looks, <laughs> you will love Billy Talent. Does that work? <laughs> yeah, it does. It's not what I was going for, but it, it, it's sincere from you. Cool. All right, let's... Maybe Power Man 5000. We'll Ugh. see. But they're like... Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even care anymore. You're just like, I'm just going to move on. He is fucking... He just needs a nap. He just has something... I'm like the three-year-old in the back of the car nobody wants to talk to anymore. You're just... You're mad about a haircut. It just annoys me, man. I mean, <laughs> other than that, they're a great band. Um, let's get into our verdict. Uh, right, cool. Since um, this is really your first delve into them, yeah. I want you to hit me with what you think of them. Okay, cool. So um, when it comes to these point systems here, I obviously, if it's a five out of five, I absolutely love them. Uh, this is a band that I cannot give any lower than a three out of five. Like, they're just... By nature, they're going to be that. But I don't love them, love them, but I have mad respect. So I'm going to give them a four out of five. And basically what that rating is saying is that they are a five out of five band, just not <laughs> for John Bryan. See, and you can only rate with your ears, man. You know That's what I it. mean? That's it. That's all these ears can do. Is so you, uh, is that what you give the album or what you give the band or both? I'm going to give it both. It's going to be a four out of five. Four out of five. That across is respectable. The board, across the board. So um, the, my only griefs with the album is just that it, to me, doesn't sound like a complete coherent album, but it's also their first album. It's kind of them just kind of like becoming yeah. from Pez evolving into Billy Talent. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, that's respectable. I was expecting a three. I'm really happy I got a four out of you. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, So mine, I have, of course, since I have a lot more feelings about this, right. uh, it'll go a little long here. It is so hard for me to explain why I love Billy Talent so much. They are such a unique band. They, they, like, it keeps coming up, and I don't know how to put it any better way. They don't sound like if you run, a, if you ran a record store that had a punk section and a a metal section and had a screamo section, where do you put Billy Talent's record? That's interesting. Um, and it's really hard. And also, I love it so much, and it just it, it just hits me just right. It, ha it hits all the elements I love. I love the groove of it. Right. It blows my mind. I love the singer's voice. And like I said, it is very cohe. It is a very polarizing voice. It has a very unique sound. And it's if you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, you love it. I, I would say, though, it's, it's kind of like cohe with honey on it. It's a lot more of a, a palatable voice. It's it's very unique, though, but it's a lot more yeah. palatable. Co co cohe, my thing is, like he just sings yeah. so high. Yeah, it's, it's, it's off the charts. Um, but I see where you're coming from. That. And also, there's just something about the energy, especially of this album, but of all their stuff of like, if I'm having a bad day or if I'm having a great day, I can put this on and like, I just, no matter what it is, my mood goes up five notches. That's incredible. I mean, that's really good to have in your repertoire. Uh, and that's exactly what you want out of music. Like you want it to alter your mood in a positive way somehow. I will say this. If you're listening to this and you do play guitar or you are in a band, uh, watch these guys live because uh, this guy is guitar. Like he's like Houdini. Like, I don't know how he does yeah. it. I've never seen one guy sound the way that he sounds live. It's absolutely incredible. And also, try to learn, uh, even if you can't learn a whole song, try to learn some different parts of his songs because I've yeah. learned a couple of them and like I've learned chords I didn't know. And I know, uh, I, I, I took music theory in college. It, it's it's uh, like the only other guitar work out there I've seen like that complicated is like Prince. And that's yeah. like, that's, I'm not kidding. And that and that's that that's insane. <laughs> By the way, anybody, just really quick, if you don't think Prince is good, you need to really sit down and fucking think about. Oh, your you're shit. a fucking idiot. If you think Prince is bad, like go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so Billy Talent to me, they're a band that is, like I said, they're hard to classify. To me, they're closer to Led Zeppelin than they are to Bad Religion. Okay. And Bad Religion to me is the benchmark of pure just punk punk. Okay. In every direction, the the politicalness, the the straight four four time. Sure. Like Bad Religion to me is like the benchmark of just pure punk. Sure. But they are much more. Led Zeppelin than that to me. Okay. Um, so this, my, my take on that, mm -hmm. uh, they, to me, they're a punk band that graduated college and got their degree and then kept going. Yeah. They, that's they kind have, of what it is. And that's been the whole theme with them too, where um, they kind of did things the right way, like I said, you know? And they have a very grown up sound. Yeah. Um, to talk about Ian DeSaw again, just really quick. because Amazing. It, I, this is in my notes. <laughs> The same way if you gave me a list of the best bass players of all time yeah. and Matt Freeman from Rancid doesn't make the top 10, yeah. your list is bullshit. Sure. Uh, he's a very good bassist. He's Even if you don't like punk, like he is inarguably just technique-wise and skill-wise, Matt Freeman is one of the best bassists that's ever lived. Oh, yeah, no, I can't argue with that. Like so. Top 15, you have to give to him. No, I would I'd say he's the standard. You have to compare to him. Someone who doesn't get the same amount of recognition is Ian DeSai. Ian DeSai right. should be considered one of the greatest. Like If you have a list of like the best 100 guitar players of all time mm -hmm. and he doesn't make top Top twenty-five. Your list is bullshit. No, I mean that that's fair, and I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he would make most people's top twenty-five, which is sad to be honest with you. I mean, I could be wrong with that. No, he doesn't. Like, yeah. like he's not going to be in Rolling Stone, and yeah. he deserves to be up there. No, he's he's very, 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 very good. It's like, but I don't think he cares either, which is great. No, and yeah. that, that's the thing about these guys. They like, they yeah, really like I know, like egos. I've been knocking the haircut a lot. But I, have I honestly mad, think he'd be like, okay, man. Yeah, like I have, <laughs> I have mad respect for them. Like that's that's all it comes down. I just say I'm fucking weird with certain stages. Some shit just 
Oh, I can't get over it. Yeah, it's almost like you like that thing where some people can't have cilantro. <laughs> yeah, I have the gene. <laughs> You're a super taster for I have haircuts. The douche, the douche gene. <laughs> but yeah, so to me, uh, I could keep going about them all day. Yeah, I to know me, you can. this is a five out of five album. This of is one of my top five albums of all time. That's fair. Uh, Billy Talent is a five out of five band because they're they're in my they're in my top five bands of all, all right. time. That's absolutely fair. Um, even like some of their later albums, like they they kind of grow and they learn more subtlety and more softness. That it's not as much for me. Okay. They still don't have a single album where I, there's not at least five songs where I'm like, this song fucking kicks ass. I'm, um, I, I hope we, I think we are going to come back around to these guys way down the road. Yeah. I'm excited to hear, cause I haven't heard them yet. I'm excited to hear their later stuff and just how they've matured. Mm -hmm. I think I'm probably going to like them a lot more. I think you will do because yeah. it, that, that's also, cause more... like if I had to like right now, I'm going to give them a four out of five as a band and I'm going to give this album a three out of five. Like it's okay. Yeah. So like, I'm not going to say four to five for both, but, um, it's still like, it's freaking amazing. It's really, really good. Fantastic, man. Yeah. So right. what else do we have here? The only other thing I wanted to touch on was, um, I, I was mentioning before, like Alexis on fire. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The band they tour with a lot, their drummers now. Yeah. So Alexis on Fire, I loved when I was younger. Like, absolutely loved. But the, the thing with Alexis on Fire is, and like, this is why they hold a special place in my heart, is do you know what they're named after? Like, you know, like, because like everybody oh, at first. Oh, for that girl, Alexis, who caught on fire, right? Yeah. Everybody at first would always think it's like Alex is on fire. Like, oh, was her name. Yeah, so did I until just and now. It was almost like, like, it was almost like in New York City, where, like when you live there and uh, it's Houston, but everyone calls it Houston. And that's how you can tell, like, they're not from New York City. It's like, hey, yo, is this south of Houston? And you're like, OK, it's Houston and you're not from here. So like, well, why is the other one called that? Well, they say it wrong because Houston Street's been here longer than Texas. Exactly. Because that guy's that's how he said his last name. So um, Alexis on Fire is named after a porn site. And it was alexisonfire.com. <laughs> oh, really? And their band website was like Alexis on Fire band, but they wouldn't tell you that. They're like, hey, if you want to see us, check us out, Alexis on Fire. And they wouldn't tell you the name. And you go to alexisonfire.com. It's a girl with her legs spread and her, f her feet behind her head. And you'd have to click her butthole to enter the <laughs> website. And it was just like Jesus. in like a stylized font. It was just on fire. And she said Alexis on Fire. <laughs> like that's how they got you their know, name. You know, there was a guy who went, they, he thought of that. He's like, I'm a genius. Yeah. So like that's, but like that's literally, uh, they were watching porn one day and they decided to call themselves after that, that website. And I just like to me, <laughs> they just so fucking awesome. You know, there's not a lot of tales of inspiration, at least like the public tale of like, well, one day we were watching porn and it clicked. That's awesome. And I, I want to, there's an Alex on Fire song. I, I don't think we're going to play in this episode because it is really hard, but I am going to give the link out to check it out. It's a really, really good song. It's yeah, like yeah but it, it'll be in the show notes. Yeah, I want to show it to you after we're done recording, get your feedback on it, but I think kids will like it. All right, let's just get to our last piece of business here. Let's talk about recommendations. What have you been into, John? What do you want to tell people about? Okay, so um, recommendation-wise, I am going to have to throw out there... So normally um, in this section, we kind of recommend a band for our listeners to listen to. Yeah. Okay, and we kind of throw it out there. I'm going to kind of go off the rails here, though, and I'm going to not recommend Nickelback. <laughs> and <laughs> that is my recommendation for the week. And Aaron, who do you have? I'm going to recommend Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. He couldn't make it as a blind man. Oh, my God, don't do it. Just stop. I don't. Here's the thing about Nickelback. Yeah, let's hear You it. know I have uh, a rant about this. I'm sure you do. Everybody does. What, what's your rant about Nickelback? My rant about it is it's not for you, but it's for someone else. And why should you take that away from them? You know? I mean, you could. If there's some dude just getting off a fucking double at a tire factory in Alabama. So what about and that song makes him feel better? Good for him. I'm not actually going to recommend Nickelback, but like, I also think it's just such a cheap like punchline joke at them sometimes. No, like, it was great. I understand why you don't like them. Okay, I'm going to recommend... I want to recommend a, a podcast that a couple of my friends do out of Brooklyn called Nostalgic Front. Okay. Um, how this show is kind of a nostalgic look back at pop punk and emo in the 2000s in that way. Their show is just a nostalgic look back in general. So you can find it on iTunes and everywhere. It's called Nostalgic Front. It's hosted by uh, Patrick Hasty, who is a comic from Glendale, Iowa. Really, really funny guy. Runs a couple great shows in Brooklyn. And he's co-hosted by... a. Uh, a uh, guy I used to do stand up with in Madison, who's also from Iowa, uh, named Brandon Ream. Another great guy. They're both really funny. Check them out. It's a great podcast. Uh, they have one of their episodes is about like just the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's great. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, but both really funny. Brandon and Patrick, both great guys. Oh, They're cool. also from Iowa. So I'll have I gotta to check represent. it out. Okay, so you know them from back in the day, or just actually from the city? Uh, I knew Brandon. Uh, Brandon Ream uh, lived in Madison. We did okay. stand up together. He's a 
really funny. He looks just like Andrew WK. Okay, uh, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> and Patrick, I met when I moved here. He's also really funny. He runs a great show at the Creek in the Cave. Oh, that's cool. Called Old Bits, New Bits. So yeah, okay, check cool. them out. That's awesome. Creek in the Cave is out in Astoria. That's a legendary uh, spot. Or... It's in Long Island City, you fucking eh. Cretan. I would, I'm from Astoria. I would say it's Astoria. You're from Flushing. You're not even from Astoria. I lived two years in Astoria. I don't know your life. Yeah, you don't know me. Why don't you go um, back to Florida, you So there it pig. is. That's a podcast to check out. It's pretty good. I haven't heard it yet. So. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see everybody next week. That sounds good to me. All right. That's pretty much going to do it for this week's episode. We're just going to credit all the songs we played in this week's episode. So here we go. We played off of the Billy Talent album in question, their first one from 2003. We played Prisoners of Today, Line and Sinker, This Is How It Goes, Nothing to Lose, Cut the Curtains, and Living in the Shadows. The only other song we played this week that wasn't by Billy Talent was that uh, little clip of Coheed and Cambria, Devil in Jersey City. That's off of the second stage Turbine Blade from 2002. Uh, that's a really good album. I know I have some trouble like kind of getting past uh, his voice there, but I know it's a great album. You should check it out. Also, anytime in the show when we say, hey, uh, we'll put that in the notes, we'll make sure we link to that in the show notes and whatever podcast app you use there's likely a place you can actually see these so we always link to everything we mention we don't just say that not do it we're lazy about a lot of stuff but we actually do do that one so also make sure you check out our uh, recommendations this week so the nostalgic front podcast you can find that on itunes stitcher pretty much everywhere podcasts are found and of course john's recommendation this week is just don't listen to nickelback you can do that everywhere uh, in the shower while you're sleeping pretty much anywhere but a nickelback concert and probably an auto parts store So, thank you so much for listening this week. We'll be back next week with another episode. Stay punk. Stay punk.